Good morning, everybody. Welcome to De Mexico 2015. We are here on the M&M Global stand. We have a new logo, a new design, and we are the international media partner for De Mexico this year. To open up our suite of interviews during the next two days, we have Mark Gethin, who is the global COO for Zaxis. Mark, welcome to De Mexico. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. No problem. Thank you. Welcome to the, the M&M Global Filming Studio. I suppose we should start with, we're in September now, we should start mm -hmm. about what has been the, the kind of key trends and, and drivers, if you like, for programmatic over the last 12 months? Yeah, I think the, the last 12 months were for us an exciting ride. Uh, we grow our business tremendously and mainly in the video space. So what we've seen, especially in 2015, is that programmatic finally came to video. It started in display, we grew in display, which was quite a performance thing, but now it's all about video, it's all about branding, and we do see a shift, a tremendous shift of budgets uh, from a branding perspective coming into, into video. Oh, and that's very interesting. When you talk about the shifts, how, how big a shift has it been from brands wanting to put more money into the, the, the programmatic video space? It's actually substantial. In, in some of our countries, 80% um, of our business all, is already in video. Wow. And it's a youth growth opportunity. Uh, and so we are really excited and we are bullish about our growth uh, as a company and, and mainly within our video domain. And, and what countries, if you had to kind of regionalize where programmatic and video was really kind of taking off, are there certain regions that have really got it and are really into it? So, Actually, first mover, I think, was actually Europe. Okay. Uh, uh, countries like the UK, countries like Germany, countries like Spain, right? They were the first movers in actually embracing programmatic video. Uh, and now we also do see a tremendous growth in, in Asia uh, and, of course, also in, in the U.S., and are there any particular genres of brands that get it more than others, i.e. kind of sports brands or FMCGs? Who are the, are there, is there one particular real driver? I mean, we, we see the usual suspects, right? And yeah. that's automotive, that's uh, FMCG, that's uh, telco and, and finance, and to some extent travel. Those are the, the industries uh, and, the, and, and yeah, the industries that, that drive, I think, uh, our industry in terms of what should come next. And in terms of measurement, there's always kind of debates around measurement, sure. particularly everything from click-throughs to viewability. Is there or do we need a standard kind of measurement tool to measure the impact of video and, and, and programmatic? Um, of course, I mean, Group M and, and Saxis, I think, uh, tried or is, is, are putting out new standards like the viewability rate, right? Uh, challenges that we see in fraud. But I do think that's, I hope, just a short-term problem, which just need to be uh, basically clear out the, the black sheep. Uh, and I think Group M and Saxis, we are doing, doing uh, quite a lot in that area. And then I think next year, we can really focus on proper questions like, what is the impact of a video campaign versus a TV campaign, right? Um, what about um, attribution modeling and, and those more sophisticated questions of measurement? Uh, I think we are just a little bit right now distracted by all the uh, viewability conversations. They are important and we need to solve them. And I'm, I'm very confident that we will solve them sooner or later. And then we can really go into the questions about what's the impact of, of video, what's the impact of a 30 minute, second spot in TV versus video, and those questions which then will help us to actually demonstrate the value of programmatic video, and we'll see uh, even further grow in that space. And I suppose that ties us beautifully into kind of TV and video convergence, yeah. which we've seen a lot of recently. Yeah. And, and the move of programmatic into, into television. Yeah. How, how far away do we, do we think we are from that kind of programmatic moving into mainstream yeah. TV? I think, I think everyone is getting ready. Uh, and I do think by, by 2016, we will see the first campaigns where we actually do uh, yeah, cross-channel programmatic um, buying, planning, and, and execution. Well, and, and one of the biggest arguments about programmatic and TV has always been premium ad spaces kind of being devalued. What, what, what would you say to, to, to that? I call? mean, you know, from a second perspective, we always uh, were eager to establish great relationships with premium publishers, right? We're not really so much into open exchanges. Uh, one of our uh, assets is actually the direct relationships that we have with publishers. And that actually pays out. It pays out in terms of the quality of content that we can provide, in terms of things like viewability, which just discussed, right? Yeah. And, and overall, the performance of our video campaigns. And, and, and therefore, I do think that we invested into the right uh, two areas, which is, again, uh, having the, the relationship with the BIM publishers, while at the same time, as you know, we also invested in our own DMP. So we have proprietary um, data with uh, Zaxxas Turbine. And, that bo and those both assets, I think, will play a key role uh, as uh, drivers for our growth. 
Okay, interesting. I, and one of the other key things, you kind of touched on it there, was that the content, and obviously content's become a huge thing over the last yeah. 12 months again. But at that, I suppose more so the creativity. Uh, there's a lot of talk, and some might argue now that actually programmatic and tech is driving creativity. Where, where do you kind of sit on that? Indeed. Debate? I mean, on the one hand, I mean, WP is really investing heavily in content, right? Things like Vice and others, right? So for us, actually content is, is super important. And then the second one is uh, the data actually fuels different ways of how you can actually execute uh, creative campaigns, right? So programmatic creative. Is, is one topic which we are working on. And from a Zaxxas perspective, uh, we're in a fortunate position that as being part of WBP, we have so many assets within the group, right. our creative agencies, right? Yes. So there's a tremendous uh, potential for us to, in that area, to, to grow our business, to work together with our friends uh, uh, in the creative agencies, and yeah, just to, to join forces. And that's, uh, that's great that uh, we are right now going into that area. Yeah, indeed, and I think that's, you know, there was a lot of resistance from the creatives back in the, the kind of three, four years ago, and now I think they realize actually you can get such super hyper-targeted information. Yeah, and it's consumers. a huge, huge opportunity for them, right, to grow and, and, and to working together with these guys makes me really excited. Good. And what do you see? We talked about television and programmatic starting to kind of get to the point where it's going to start to work. What do you think is going to drive 2016? If there was one thing that you think, actually, that's going to make the difference to programmatic in 2016, what would it be? Um, again, I do think that we, by 2016, we've done our homework. And all the questions about viewability, fraud, inventory, I think should be actually thought out. And then we can really focus on what performance do you actually get out of programmatic video? And what's the return of ad spent? Right. and how you can demonstrate that you actually do see uh, a, a high return of investment. And just actually this morning, I uh, already had a meeting with a, a, a depression model company uh, and they do exciting things and they can actually demonstrate that programmatic is actually much undervalued in terms of the performance that it can deliver. And I do think that's the conversations we are going to have in 2016, which allows us to even grow further. Okay. That's very interesting. People kind of undervaluing the, the, the value of it, which is yeah. which is quite surprising yeah. now because you think most people are starting to understand it because you see some brands are obviously trying to take programmatic in-house. But do we, do we think that is something that would only happen to those global brands that have multi-million pounds to spend on advertising? I, I do think so. And even in that case, I would doubt it that they will do it in the long run yeah. because programmatic is really, is really sophisticated, data-driven campaign planning and optimization. It's a lot of work, right? Yes. And you need a lot of manpower to do that. Uh, and that's why, for example, that's what, what the agencies do, right? Yeah. Uh, and if you think about it, actually programmatic is a huge opportunity for our agency. Think about the conversations about wallet gardens, right? Uh, if you have a wallet garden like Google and another one like Facebook, yeah, you have to have someone who's managing those wallet gardens, right? Yes. And that is a big, a big task and, and I think the agencies are ready or will be ready to actually do that and I don't think that the that the client should in-house that I think that they should continue to rely on agencies who do that for a living right and yes. can do it really really good so actually I do think that um, although some agencies might be a little bit concerned about uh, their their um, growth opportunities that they will see and we see it within Grubam right that there are huge huge opportunities to grow so almost you could see programmatic trading desks being the savior of the, the new modern agency. You can say so. I mean, from, from a Saxon perspective, right, we never were a trading desk, right? We yes. see uh, ourselves as a programmatic media provider to the agencies, right? Um, and, and therefore, I think there's a great um, uh, uh, le uh, world where the agencies provide their services in programmatic buying, in optimization, in analytics, while we are providing audiences in a programmatic fashion and media in a programmatic fashion to those agencies. And actually, as a matter of fact, we have started to um, grow our direct business uh, with non-WBP clients and non-WBP agencies outside of Group M. Uh, and it's, 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 it's really uh, ticking up, which sees, means that there is actually really a big demand for access of high quality performing uh, programmatic, programmatic access to audiences and media. And so seeing both playing hand in hand, uh, and we've launched Group M Connect, right? Yes. Which again uh, is, is fantastic for for Zaxxas, how we can work together. Uh, again, makes it really positive about 2016. 
Absolutely. And what, what do you think will be the biggest challenges for 2016 and, and beyond for programmatic? What's going to be the, the hardest thing? What, you know, I remember, I, I, I remember <laughs> sitting on a similar chair yeah. at the Mexico, I think about two or three years ago, and I got the same question. I, and, and my answer was, and I think it holds true today, is that we are moving so fast, right? Uh, and sometimes it's good to take a deep breath, right, and, and just focus on what we already have. We don't need every single month or a single quarter the next sexy shiny object. Let's focus on what we do right now and do it better so that we actually can really sort out things like viewability and others and, and really double down on what capabilities we right now have and apply them in the best possible way as opposed to just jumping to the next thing, right? And not doing what we already do perfectly. So let's try to uh, slow down for a moment, do better what we do uh, and then we will automatically see even more growth coming down the horizon. Fantastic. Well, it's great to meet you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, much, you for being our first interview. Thank uh, you so enjoy much. the rest of your debate. I will definitely do, and so you do. Sure. Should you do. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.